On this episode of The Peaks Life, Lynn Fernie and Mike Warren are joined by Mel Tempest, fitness industry legend. Mel's got a global reputation for being passionate, innovative, and incredibly generous in her knowledge sharing. Mel's a real early adopter, and her own health club, Ballarat Body and Soul, which was established in 2003, was one of the first independent health clubs to introduce the Australian gym goers to lots of new technology and fitness classes. Since 2003, Mel has been a member of various fitness industry associations and industry roundtables in Australia and overseas. Her mission is to provide resources and support for new and emerging individuals and businesses within the fitness industry. She's committed to creating opportunities and generating choices for fitness professionals and club owners alike to help them achieve success in their own ventures. Mel has significant expertise in educating people about how to successfully adopt change, apply trends and operate with resilience. Her goal is to make the industry more accountable for its actions and to continually challenge the status quo. Mel's proven results are attributed to her noble approach, which is founded in honesty, empathy and innovation. We talked to Mel on this episode of The Peak's Life about her own journey in fitness, how she keeps herself well and grounded, the health scare that she had a few years ago, and her advice to all professionals, entrepreneurs, and executives worldwide about how they can stay fit, in shape, keep themselves well, and be present for their families. Hi everyone and welcome back to The Peaks Life and I'm Lynn Fernie joined by Mike Warren as usual and today we've got a very special guest. I'd like to welcome Mel Tempest. Mel, welcome to The Peaks Life. Wow, hello guys and thank you so much for having me Mike and Lynn. I'm very excited by today's episode. Cool. Um, so we're going to dive straight in because you know, everybody's heard your bio already and I guess what I'd, I'd really like to, to hear a bit about is What's brought you to, to where you are today and, and, and what are you doing right now, Mel? Um, so obviously I'm a health club owner and I have been for the last 16 and a half years and probably for the last eight to 10 years, I've been focusing on helping other fitness business owners to think outside the square, to, to be bigger, to be bolder, to create stronger profit lines in their business. Excellent. Cool. So, Mel, you're one of those rare club owners that's the has remained independent. You've been fiercely independent for many years. Um, what? Why did you decide to start to give back to the industry and sort of help other independent business owners? Um, Mike, I think um, to be quite honest with you, when I opened up my club. I didn't have a mentor or a coach to help me. Pretty much there was just my husband and I. And so one of the things I promised myself as every time I made a mistake and I learned something and I moved forward, that when I had a little bit more experience, that I would be there to help others because there was nobody there to help Mm -hmm. us. So that's why I give back. Um, I love to create opportunity for people. So if somebody hadn't have done that for me in the very, very beginning when I became a a circuit instructor nearly 20 years ago, if somebody hadn't given me that first class, then all the things that I've done over the last 16 and a half years wouldn't have happened. So I love to Mm -hmm. give other people opportunity too. Mm. And so obviously day to day, you're still a hands-on club owner as well. So you spend your time running, running and looking after your club plus mentoring and coaching other club owners, yeah? I certainly do. I still teach classes every single day. I mean, that's the reason why I opened up a club was because I'm passionate about group programming and group fitness. And yes, I'm there every day. I've got uh, a great team. We've got, there's about 20 of us in our team. So wow. I sort of, I go in, I take the classes, micromanage a little bit on the, on the front desk, but, <laughs> I, but I enjoy doing that. I enjoy doing that. But pretty much the club runs itself. So that's given me ample opportunity and time to then go out into the fitness business industry and then help other club owners and instructors as well. Mm -hmm. So um, Mel, I'm really curious and I'm sure our listeners are as well. Tell us a bit about the the group classes that you run personally. You know, what's your passion? What do you enjoy? What sort of people do you attract into those classes? 
Um, so one of the things that um, we've maintained over the last 16 years, Lynn, is that we're a non-intimidating environment. So that, that, that's pretty much who we are. We're a non-intimidating environment. We are there for all fitness levels, all shapes and sizes, um, irrespective of, you know, your sexual orientation or your, your preference. We are there for everybody. Mm-hmm. So what we found is that when we opened the club, all of those people who were looking for an environment that was non-intimidating joined and so we've kept that culture for the last 16 years and they're the types of people that come to our classes um i love teaching freestyle step i love dance classes i I love teaching dance fitness and of course i love teaching combat as well Mm -hmm. um i love to instruct hit classes don't necessarily love to be the participant of the <laughs> class, um, but, but I love taking classes and that's my passion. And, and that's why I opened up a club because I love teaching group fitness. And, you know, we can just hear that coming through. And I think a lot of the people that we work with, Mel, you know, they, they're perhaps just starting out in movement or exercise. Gyms, are, you know, they are intimidating places. And, you know, as you said, you've, you've created a non-intimidating environment. And, you know, one of the things that we always say to people is pick something you love. And, you know, what's better than dance or something that's got, you know, a bit of um, bit of fun, a bit of funk to it. So I think that's a great place for a lot of people to start, right? Oh, absolutely. And the most important thing is that business owners need to tell their, their consumers that they don't need to know their left or their right. Just come in and have a great time. Mm-hmm. Just move because that's all we want you to do is to move and the rest will happen for you. Yeah, exactly right. Um, And I think, you know, just getting people in and, and, you know, giving them a little taste of it, then they can start to develop and they can figure it out and what classes they like, what they've done, but at least they're doing something. At least they're making that start, especially at this time of year when, you know, Christmas is coming, lots of social events, they want to do something for the new year. Hey, start it now. Do it. Do it right now. Do it today. And everybody wants to lose 10 kilos before Christmas because they're all going to see their in-laws and outlaws that they haven't seen for 12 months. So everybody's like, three weeks before Christmas, can I lose? It's like, no, you need to do it all year round. So, so don't leave it to the last minute. So, Mel, what, when, when we're talking to people who are trying to get into shape or um, we have a lot of our people listening, you know, starting their wellness journey and one of, one of the pillars of wellness is obviously movement or exercise. Give us, um, give us an example of what sort of services and support you would offer someone walking in the door. Aside from the classes, what other support could they expect from a club like yourself? So the first thing that comes in is obviously we get them to fill out their information and ask them why they're there at the club. And then each individual person is different. So we don't re- replicate the same program or, or, or the same you know, class choice or anything like that for every single person that comes in because each person is an individual with a different agenda and with different needs. So the most important thing is that they sit down and they have a discussion with the trainer. Now, depending, of course, on what their goals is, we'll decide on where they're going to go on their journey. So for some people, it might be that they want nutrition advice or they might want to jump onto the body scanners or they might just come in and say, look, you know, I've had knee reconstruction. All I want to do is just jump on the bikes mm-hmm. the next couple of months. And, and that's all I want to do. The most important thing is irrespective of what their agenda is and what their goal is, is to make sure that you include them as part of your community. So to mm-hmm. make sure that your new members are mixing in with the ones that have been coming for a while and creating that social engagement. That doesn't have to that doesn't mean that they have to go to a class. You can do that on the gym floor and you can do that at the reception desk. Mm -hmm. So the most important part is actually the discussion because that's where the journey is created. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, that community feel, I think it is so important. I I believe that's why a lot of CrossFit gyms do well because they're, they're pretty good at creating community so that people feel supported, that they've got um, people who help them feel accountable and, you know, they're more likely to, to stick with it. Um, so Mel, I've got, a, I've got a follow-on question and it's more about the, the fitness industry. So, you know, you've been long-term in the fitness industry. You're an advocate for the industry. You're an ambassador in the industry. What are you seeing in terms of the trends right now? What's happening in fitness, what's happening in Australia globally? Can you give us a bit of insight into that? Uh, Absolutely. So first and foremost, in terms of education for fitness business owners, events are becoming more personalized. Mm -hmm. So 
You know, when you used to rock up to an event, there'd be like six or 700 people in the room. People don't want that anymore. They want to go to an event where there's 50 to 100 people in the room where they can have that social engagement with like-minded people and be able to go up to the presenter at the end of the, you know, the discussion and say, hey, can I borrow you for five minutes? So more personalised events, definitely for fitness business education. Uh, In terms of trends in group programming, more wellness programs are coming out. So, so, uh, for example, Soul Body in the USA, they've got like five bar programs. And so that's becoming extremely popular. You've got your yoga fit, you've got your Pilates. Some programs have been around for years. And what we need to do now is to start to incorporate those into everyday living. So it's not something that you might say, years ago, you might go do yoga for a six week course. Now what we're saying to people is you need to come and do the bar. You need to come and do yoga. You need to come and do Pilates and you need to be doing it on a, on a regular basis. So that's a trend that's becoming extremely strong. Of course, your other programs, you know, like your hit cycle, uh, they're always going to be popular. Yeah. What else is also coming out into the industry is there's now more choices for club owners in regards to the choices of classes that they do put into the group fitness room. So there's more pre-choreographed programs out there now that are license free, which means that that's actually going to save money for the club owner and they can mm-hmm. invest money elsewhere into their club. It might be for mm. the staff to get trained or it might be to, you know, to purchase equipment. Um, the, that's what I'm seeing consistently in the industry. Mm-hmm. What I'm loving at the moment mm. is that we have a new generation of educator coming through that's now educating the new generation of uh, professional and the new generation of exercise are coming through. So Mm. all the people like myself are now becoming mentors for the younger fit pros that are coming through. So there's there's quite a few people out there that we should be taking note of now that are coming through the the ranks and really offering some great stuff to the fitness business industry. Interesting. Awesome. So Mel, a lot of the the people tuning into this podcast... um, are busy professionals. So we have sort of a, a group of maybe 45 to 60 year old busy professionals who tune into the Peace Life podcast and they're on their wellness journey. So they are busy professionals, business owners, entrepreneurs, and they're trying to get the grasp of that work life balance. They've spent most of their life focusing on developing their business and their career. Now they're realizing as they're maturing that their body's starting to suffer. So if you had someone in that category walk in the door of your club and say, look, I've been a career professional all my life. And my doctor has said, I've got to get in shape. What's the process you go through to, to get them motivated, hold them accountable and take them, you know, take them on that journey? The first thing I say to them, it's okay for you to give yourself permission to do this. Mm. Good. That's the most important thing because there's this sense of guilt that they have to do what they're doing every day because it's a whole mm. team of people behind them yes. that they're, they're accountable to. Mm. So you're going to be no good to these people if you run yourself into the ground and Mm. you get to a point where you've got chronic fatigue and you can't get out of bed. Mm. So if you want to keep doing what you do and you want to do it well, you have to give yourself permission to go, you know what, I'm actually not coming into work today. Mm. I'm taking time out for me. So at the bottom of a lot of my emails, when I'm dealing with busy people, I usually actually type in and don't forget to take time out for you. Mm. So somebody, for someone that was coming into the club, that was, that's the first discussion we would have. Mm. And then again, it comes back to the goals. So this person might say to us, I've been trapped behind a computer screen for the last, you know, five years, you know, the knees aren't good, the back's no good, I don't cycle anymore. Take them back to a time in their life where they enjoyed movement. Mm-hmm. So let's just say, you know, you guys came in to see me and Mike says, oh, I remember 10 years ago, I used to jump on my bike all the time and go and ride with the kids. Okay, well, every gym has a bike. So let's not, let's start the journey there on the bike mm-hmm. in the gym. Mm-hmm. So try and find something that they used to enjoy doing a decade ago and try and get that happening in the club for them. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't like start shoving hey, and you've got to do this for your nutrition and you've got to do this because yeah. the moment you overwhelm them with all of this information, it becomes too hard and they just go, no, I'm not doing yeah, it. Absolutely. You know, you have to use the KISS method yeah. with them and the KISS method is keep it simple, safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's it. it. It's not hard to do. You know, you just got to stop, learn to listen, find out what they used to do, mm-hmm and implement that into their programming every day. 
So Mel, one of the things that we, we find is a lot of people that we work with, um, a lot of people that we speak to who are in that professional executive category, um, you know, they haven't looked after themselves. Um, as we said, that they're, they're deconditioned, they've never prioritized, haven't really enjoyed exercise. And often the thing that, that brings them in, as Mike said, it's either the doctor say, you've got to get yourself fit, or they've got a health crisis, or their friends had a health crisis. Um, is that what you see as well? Is that the only thing that, that motivates them to come into the gym? Or are we seeing a trend where people are starting to get a bit more proactive with their health and actually wanting to get you know, healthy and well? So if we're talking about your age demographic, then they're pushed, the majority of them are pushed into the gym, especially, <laughs> especially men. So women are starting to go, hey, the kids, have, the kids have left home, they've left uni, they've gone off. And so women are starting to take more time for themselves mm. as opposed to, to men. So men need to be picked up and pushed into the gym. Uh, absolutely. In terms of health crisis, I think we've all had some type of health crisis in our life that's made us sit up and go, wow. So I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Um, and so I had my own crisis, I think it's about five or six years ago now. I was diagnosed um, with a benign brain tumour. And I was somebody that was going to the gym. I work at the gym. I own the gym. I eat healthy. And this still happened to me. Mm. The difference between me and the person that doesn't go to the gym and who's not looking after themselves is if, God forbid, I'm lying on the bed looking up at the bright lights, I can say that I gave myself the best possible opportunity to be the best version of me because not only were my team counting on that, so were my family. Mm -hmm. So now I sort of say to people that are, that are coming in and you know having a health crisis or a friend has passed on, you owe it to yourself to be the best version of you. And by not doing so, you're actually being a little bit selfish and self-centered because if you become sick, then it's going to be up to your partner to look after you and it's going to be up to your team to keep the business running. So you have to have a bit of accountability. I, I love that, Mel. I love the fact that you say to people, hey, you're actually being really selfish yes. because yeah. that's really what it's about. If yeah. you choose to be pig-headed and ignore all the advice and you don't do anything about it, um, then it is selfish because you are going yeah. to burden on the people around you at, at some point in time right absolutely and that's not fair mm. you know we we work to get to a certain stage in life where we can go and do the things that we've spoken about 20 or 30 years beforehand how dare we not look after ourselves mm. and how dare we take those opportunities away from the people that we love most because we didn't take care of ourselves that's absolutely right. And I think, you know, those things that you just talked about there, mm. they're all really the mindset things, aren't they? Yeah. Exactly. Don't be selfish. Think about the other people around you. Prioritize your health and wellness because it's really important. And then the last one around, you know, being convinced that you can get through any health crisis, being convinced that you can get well and healthy and you can be that best version of yourself. It's absolutely possible to yeah. have outstanding health and wellness at, at any age, to be honest. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you jump onto our club's actual Facebook page, we do a lot of testimonials and video clips. And so we've actually got one of our members is in his late 70s and our oldest member is in their 90s. Still right. in the club, still active. That's what it's about. Yeah. Brilliant. And that's a fantastic role model. And, you know, we're yeah. seeing more and more reports of people who are in their 80s, 90s, you know, even the, the, the people who are in their hundreds, doing exercise, keeping fit. And there's no reason with modern technology why we can't do that because everything's stacked in our favor if we look after ourselves. Oh, absolutely. Look at the choices that we have nowadays compared to 30 years ago. Mm, absolutely. Completely right. And so that just brings me really nicely on to yourself. So you said you had your own health scare yep. about five years ago. You're obviously fit and you're active and you're um, working in the club, you're running the classes, you're doing the exercise. But what else do you do, Mel, to look after yourself? You know, what about, you know, your, your diet, your sleep? How does that look? Um, I gave myself permission about two years ago that it was okay to go and get a weekly massage. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I struggled with just going to get a massage because I felt, oh, I should be doing this or I should be doing something else. And then I just woke up one day and said, I've waited my whole life to be able to go, hey, I'm going to go and get a massage. So I, I actually go and get a relaxation massage um, once a week. 
-hmm. And I do that religiously on the weekends. In terms of nutrition, I used to be extremely, extremely like pedantic about what I would eat. Um, I would never stray from that. Probably in the last 18 months, I've given myself permission now as I get older, you know, to enjoy a few more fruits in life. And that's okay Mm. because we aren't meant to punish ourselves with food. Um, I exercise religiously because I love teaching classes. And in terms of sleep, uh, I won't say I get eight hours sleep every night because that, that would be falsifying the truth. But sometimes I get six hours, sometimes I get seven hours, I might get a little bit less. But that doesn't mean that I don't take a cat nap on Saturday afternoon for an hour after I've read the local newspaper because I've worked long enough and hard enough to allow myself to do that. Um, And, you know, I get up in the morning and I check my emails in bed and I have a cup of coffee and then I get out of bed, you know, around about 7.30, 8 o'clock and I'm in the club by by 9 o'clock. And I think, you know, what you just described, and we can hear it from what you're saying, you're obviously one of those super busy people, you know, the sort of person that everybody gives everything to because you get stuff done. Um, and, you know, you're clearly on the go, moving very, very fast, getting through lots of things, as, as many professionals are. And they're the, the group of people like yourself who find it really hard to stop and say, hey, what about time for me? What about me doing something for me? Yeah. And I think it's super important at all ages, but especially as we get that little bit older to be able to say, I'm not going to to stress myself out by working that little bit longer. Or like you said, I'm, I'm going to. Well, there's, there's nothing to be doing. gained. Yeah, yeah exactly true. right. You, you actually find over time, don't you, that you don't do any more, you don't achieve any more. You can actually achieve more with less. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think we just need to stop and ask ourselves, what is our agenda? Mm-hmm. To die totally. young to die young and not enjoy what we actually were working for or to get to a certain age and go, wow, I feel really great. I'm going to enjoy my grandkids. I'm going to enjoy my adult kids. And you know what? I'm going to get out on that bike and I'm going to ride the bike down the road or go fishing or whatever it might be um, because there is more to life than work. Yeah. So Mel, when you when you had your health scare, did your did your lifestyle change? Did your mindset change when you had that bit of a wake up call? You were going along, everything was going well. All of a sudden, there was a bit of a shake. What changed after that? Um, I think what changed after it, to be quite honest, was I started to. I was already giving a fair bit to a lot of people. Mm. I actually started to give more. I thought I'm actually going to go out there and just give everybody what I've got and hope that people can pick up some of that, you know, whether it's education, skill, whatever it might be, and go out there into the industry or into life and, and learn from, from what I was going through. You know, I, I've spoken about, you know, what happened to me and, you know, like I've had radiation treatment since then on, on the brain and the thought process that goes through that when you're lying in the machine. Mm. Um, Getting up on stage, you know, Mike and Lynn, to teach a class and when you're looking out at everybody, this little voice in your head goes off and says, oh, God, shit, imagine this could have all been taken away from me just Mm -hmm. like that had I not been fit and healthy. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is I found out early because I was fit and healthy. So had I not been, the body and mind wouldn't have picked up a few things that weren't quite right. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't have gone to get it checked out. A couple of years might have gone past and something, you know, worse could have happened. But because I was fit and healthy and the body was reacting to something that wasn't right, that sort of alerted me to go off and to check it out. So it made me realize really how important, you know, eating and exercising is. And I pushed that message on to everybody else. But then giving people more of me so that they can grow as individuals. I think if you've got a gift, why not give it? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, Mel, just to add a bit more value um, to our listeners, I'd just love to pick up one point there. You said that you were, because you were fit and healthy, you picked up those things that weren't quite right, that perhaps other people might might not have done. And that mind-body connection, you know, that self-awareness and understanding mm-hmm. when things are a touch out of whack, I think is really important. In your experience, you know, with what happened to you, what was it that you saw? What was it that you spotted that, that wasn't quite right? Um, I was teaching a class 
Now, it's a well-known fact in the industry that I always have the music too loud I, <laughs> because I think every class is a rock concert. So I was teaching a class and I actually told the class, it was above our class, and I said to them, everybody get down on your chest and work your bench. And I went, oh, shit, I hope no one heard that. I'm glad the music <laughs> was loud. Um, and then a couple of other things started to happen. I was getting a little bit of vertigo. I'd be sitting down, you know, on my laptop and the room was spinning. And I was just like, oh, this is just not right. Had a few tingles in the face and just said, nah, this is just, nah, there's something not right here. So I went off to the doctors and I just said, um, you know, I've had this, had this and had this. This is not normal. And so pretty much went straight off and had an MRI done to the brain. And that came back and told us that I had a, a, a benign um, brain tumour. Mm. But my point is, if I had been somebody that was abusing their body with no exercise, bad diet, smoked, excess alcohol, those things, those things, people would go, oh, that's just because I don't look after myself. Mm. I should look after myself better. And they would ignore them. And then what happens is, in my case, let's just say, you know, the brain tumor had a grown, then I wouldn't have been alerted to what was going on until maybe I had an epileptic fit. Mm -hmm. or I had a stroke or something else. So looking after your body and being aware of what's right and what's wrong alerted me to something that could have actually blown totally out of control and would have had maybe sad circumstances for my family. Yeah, absolutely right. So incredibly lucky that, that you were in tune with your body and yeah. you went and got it checked out really early. And mm -hmm. I think that's also an important message for people because you know, what we see is a lot of people, especially, especially men, to be honest, they, you know, they put on the mask, you know, they've got to be the strong macho guy. And especially again, in that 45 to 65 professional executive yeah. age bracket, they say, oh, you know, they tend to ignore or dismiss or sweep under the carpet, those little signs and symptoms. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. I'm fine. I can't take time off work. I don't have time to go to the doctor. I don't need to, it'll, it won't be anything. It'll be indigestion mm -hmm. or um, I'm just, I just didn't get enough sleep last night or, or whatever it is. And they tend to put these things off until, until it is too late. It's very true, Lynn. If I can just tell you a story, actually. Oh, um, when, I, when I opened my club in 2003, um, a gentleman by the name of John um, was a staff member with me. And so John this year, this year um, was getting a little bit discomfort around his belly button. He was a runner, marathon runner in his 70s, um, personal trainer, and he'd moved to Queensland uh, a few years back. Ignored it, ignored it, ignored it. He's a male. Sorry, Mike. Ignored it, ignored it, ignored it. It'll be okay. It'll be fine. Blah, 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 blah. So he got diagnosed um, with cancer in August and John left it too late. And it could have, they, could have, they could have done something had he gone 18 months earlier. So he got diagnosed in August and he passed away about three weeks ago. Wow. And when I spoke to him on the phone, he said some of his regrets were, and I spoke to him about four weeks before he passed on, his regrets were that um, he was sorry that he was a silly old bastard and he didn't get to the doctors when he should have gone to the doctors because now his biggest regret was that all the plans that he had for 2020 with his partner are now never going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And how sad is that? And that's and that happens all the time, though, Lynn, because yeah. because men feel that they're supposed to have this macho um, persona of being strong, and and you know nothing's going to to bring them down. That they're you know, and it's wrong. Men um, are just as vulnerable as women, and they need to just stop for a moment and go, I have something wrong, and I need some help. Yeah. Exactly right. Exactly I think it's right. also it's also the same thing that you know stops them coming into a gym or stops them doing yeah. movement because again they're convinced that they are invincible and they also don't want to feel vulnerable. They don't want to come along and be the one who can't mm. lift the weights, can't do the cardio. Mm. Who's the the least fit? So that yeah. becomes just this big barrier to entry, and they and they never get started. Mm. 
And the only way that we're going to stop that being the message is that we need to put the pressure on the media to mm. stop over glamorizing fitness. It's not about the less fabric you mm. wear, the better you are. It's not about the biceps or this. This is about, this is about mental health now. Yeah. The, the days of it being a physical thing, that's gone. It's about mental health. It's about movement and just being the best version of you. Absolutely right, hundred percent. I think that's the that's the difference, Mel. Is the speaking as a guy and a guy who's got a lot of mates who are in their middle of their career. There, you know, they they strive every day to provide for their family. They strive every day to develop their career or their business. They put this incredible pressure on themselves to be the provider and be the strong one, mm. and they just don't prioritize their wellness. They it's 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 such an uphill battle to help them understand yeah. that the wake up call could just be death. You know, the first oh, thing, absolutely, first thing yeah. They get his death, and the wake up call. The wake up call could be sort of a, a life changing medical problem. Mm. But to be proactive and get ahead of the game and get in shape, it's such a difficult conversation. They just that priority between my career and my wellness. They just have that completely out of balance. Yeah. And, yeah. and stop assuming as a male that you have to provide the bigger house, the better car, yeah. and the more five-star holidays. <clears throat> because you can just have as much happiness in life in the smaller house, the smaller car, and the three-star holiday. Yeah. yeah. With your family around you. and having That's exactly life. right. That's yes, exactly yeah. right. And I think a lot of the time men, men actually create the pressure mm. because of what they provide. So yes. maybe just like scale down a little bit and ask yourself what's more important. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. I think that's that's so important, and I, and I think the conversation's growing. I'd love to see more of it, though. Yeah, you I agree. You don't have to have the the material assets. No. They're not the thing that makes you happy, and they're certainly not going to be helpful to you if you're in your grave. So I think that's a really really important point for for the people tuning in. I think the message that you you mentioned earlier around we're being selfish, we're being selfish by not looking after our wellness, mm, is a yeah. great message because. Yeah. When we speak to these guys or girls in, their, you know, in the middle of their career, they don't think for a second they're being selfish. They think they're doing the right thing. They think they are trying to develop their career to get the material assets to be able to retire and enjoy. They, they don't for a second think that the path they're following is the wrong path. So telling them they're being selfish and it can all explode in their face is probably one of the ways to get them to wake up and have a good look. Yeah. So Mel, if you were talking to, to one of these people and you, know, you had to give them some advice and you had to give them three top tips, you know, Mel's three top tips. What would your top three be? Top three tips. Wow. Have a really good look at the reflection in the mirror and ask yourself, <laughs> is, is that who you really want to be? That's the first one. And then get yourself a piece of paper and do a T the pros and cons of what you're doing now in life mm -hmm. and which side is the better. Mm, and awesome. the third, the third is, Go to someone and just say, I don't like the reflection and I don't like what's written on the paper. Tell me how to go where I really want to go. Mm -hmm. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with saying, I don't like how things are at the moment. Mm -hmm. I want change, but I need someone to help me. Yep. That's awesome. I think that's great. And getting somebody to help, somebody who's, you know, on the outside, they're not you, they can drive you, they can yeah. help you, they can support you, they can make you accountable. It just, it's a game changer for a lot of people, isn't it? It is. I mean, the reality is an outsider's perception can be life changing because usually the people close to us say what's safe because they don't want, they don't want conflict. Right. And a lot of people, a lot of executives or busy people do flag the one the one reason they love personal trainers, they love the group exercise is because of the accountability. Mm, and that's, yeah. that's the thing that a busy person needs. They need an appointment for themselves yep. to show up and have a trainer or a class without that appointment if they're just allowed to come and go as they please. Yeah. It's not accountable for them and they won't, they won't follow through. Sure. Yeah. So Mel, I've got a, another question for you. And this is, <laughs> yeah, if you could go back and you could talk to your 20-year-old self, <laughs> what advice would you give the 20-year-old Mel? Um, my youngest daughter is 25. <laughs> so I told her this the other week when she was in the car with her sister, um, who's 32. So there's an age gap and they're two different personalities. I said to them, education, don't, I, I wish that someone had tapped me on the shoulder when I was wagging school at 14 and said, 
you are entitled to an education and you can aspire to be more than what your surroundings are. Mm. So education, absolutely. Mm. And never stop learning. Never stop learning. I think that's, that's yeah, again, very cool. That, that, you know, I think we all should invest in ourselves, yeah. develop ourselves. And again, that goes for any age, you know, whatever it is, whatever, you know, whatever your passion is, then find a way to, to keep developing, keep educating, keep understanding, keep learning. And the beauty is, you know, there's, we have access to so much now. The internet brings it all to our fingertips. So, you know, there's no real excuse. You can keep going with anything you want to. Um, it's true that the internet can bring us everything, but we also need to fold the laptop down and close the phone <laughs> and detox from the internet. <laughs> 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 it, it is it is i have on my phone and this is something that your listeners can probably do on the on your phone it actually tells you how long you're online mm, and how yes. long you're on each social media platform <laughs> and so maybe you can give yourself your own kpi that you know over over a 30 day period that you're going to drop off a couple of minutes here and there well um firstly thank you we would love to say thank you for um not just sharing some insights but also your personal journey mm -hmm. that's really powerful and it's important i think those people tuning in they love to hear someone who's actually been through mm -hmm. the journey you've been through you've come to a, a health crisis you've overcome it mm -hmm. you're an advocate for looking after your wellness so thank you for sharing that with us thank you're you for very sharing welcome amazing, amazing tips and mm -hmm. insights yeah. we uh, we've loved chatting with you Absolutely. and it's been great to have you on the peaks live so thank you so much mm -hmm. oh, you're very welcome thank mm -hmm. you and thank you for having me i was just so <laughs> excited <laughs>